Joining us now in a Closing Bell exclusive interview is C3 AI CEO, Tom Siebel. Tom, welcome to the show. Good to have you. Good morning or good afternoon, Sarah. <laughs> the numbers, the, the bookings were certainly impressive, up 500 percent from this quarter last year, more than 100 percent growth from the from the previous quarter. Talk about what is driving demand for AI software services. What, what exactly are you providing in these orders to your big corporate customers? It was a great quarter. It was a great year. Uh, we exceeded expectations. We are in the enterprise AI application software business. So our customers would be you know, some of the largest companies in the world, like Shell, like the United States Air Force, like 3M, uh, Bank of America, and others who are using AI to change everything about the way they design products, the way they deliver services, the way they serve customers. Uh, to provide lower cost products into the hands of more satisfied customers. And uh, this is a, a very, very large and very rapidly growing market. And in that space of enterprise AI, I believe we are the largest player in the world. If you look at the industry breakdown and you name some of your big customers there, I know financial services is a growth area, but I think oil and gas is one of your biggest industry groups as far as your customers. You don't necessarily think of those companies as on the cutting edge of, of AI technology. Why, why do you think that is, that they've been well, such a big, big area for you? Well, I think that's just it's not making the news. If you look at world leading companies like World Dutch Shell, well, Shell, I believe, is the fifth largest company in the world. It might be the second largest oil company in the world. And they are reinventing themselves as a, a zero carbon footprint company by 2050. This was, they're changing everything about the way they operate upstream, downstream, midstream, integration of renewables. And C3 AI is very much at the heart of that of the basically digital transformation of Shell, again, the fifth largest company in the world. So it will, other companies like Aramco are equally advanced. So I think if we really take a hard look at what the oil companies are doing, they are, they are reinventing themselves as clean energy companies. And it's quite exciting. I think Shell's market cap, 150 billion. I'm not sure it's the fifth largest. It's definitely a big company. So I, I don't think it really matters. But uh, anyway, what, what, what about the, the transition Thomas, from uh, energy and industrial focus into some of the other areas. You mentioned some banks there. Uh, people sometimes suggest you are too focused on energy and industrials and, and need to kind of uh, broaden that, that uh, suite of, of clients. How's that going? Well, we're highly diversified. I think Shell's about a $300 billion business in revenue. But we're, we're, we began in utilities. We moved into oil and gas. Today, we're in banking, manufacturing, aerospace, defense, intelligence, telecommunications. So we're highly diversified across a wide range of industries. Uh, the business is very rapidly growing. It's growing in Asia. It's growing in Europe. It's growing in, um, in North America. And uh, we significantly raised our... Uh, growth expectations for next year. I believe that next year we'll be growing, you know, north of 30 to 33 percent top line, which will put us in, you know, the top deck aisle of rapidly growing uh, software companies. So uh, business is good. The market is growing. And, uh, you know, we had a great quarter and a great year. And in terms of uh, reaching a sort of one billion dollar top line uh, business. Is that something you envisage doing organically or would there be a, a few small acquisitions that you'd consider? Well, that's a great question, Wilfred. We're, we're focused on organic growth. Uh, we have a huge addressable market opportunity, perhaps uh, you know a third of a trillion dollar addressable market in enterprise AI software. Our objective there is to establish and maintain a market leadership position globally like we did previously at Siebel Systems and like we did previously when I was an executive at Oracle Corporation. Uh, now, I'm not saying that there might not be some acquisitions in the course of that to, you know, to, to fill out, to, you know, add certain capabilities to the product. But in general, we are focused on organic growth. And uh, I think that that is that is the key to success for us. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.